right now on Arkansas Crime Watch. The FBI's most prolific serial killer speaking out about one of his victims. I forget her name. Oh, wait. I think it was Ruth. What he recalls about a woman he claims he killed in central Arkansas nearly 20 years ago. Shot and killed. But the level of criminal activity and shootings and robberies around here has kind of made it made us numb to it. Where the victim was found and what we know about the shooting. A burglar caught in the act on several different occasions. I wouldn't hesitate to shoot someone if they were in my home. How homeowners in several different neighborhoods are now fighting back. Through 75 counties and hundreds of investigations, from the most violent crimes to petty infractions, this is Arkansas Crime Watch with Kevin Kelly. Take a good look. His name is Samuel Little, and the FBI is calling him the most prolific serial killer in U.S. history. Good evening, and thanks for watching Arkansas Crime Watch on Fox16.com. I'm Kevin Kelly. Tonight, investigators need your help identifying a woman he admitted to murdering outside North Little Rock. Our Susan L. Corey talking with the FBI about a case that has made national headlines. Oh man, I love this. Sitting inside a Texas prison, Samuel Little describes the woman he claims he murdered in central Arkansas nearly 20 years ago. I forget her name. Oh wait, I think it was Ruth. He drew this sketch of her. She's one of 93 victims. The FBI says Little confessed to killing. The earliest cases date back to 1970 and continued for more than three decades. Now, where did you meet her at? Okay, he got me in a red crack house. Little can't pinpoint the exact time they met, but claims it was in the early 90s and they spent several days together. We were going shoplifting. We went to Sears. We went to uh, Kohler's. And that's where I got busted. North Little Rock police locked him up for that in April of 1994. But Little only stayed in jail for a few hours. They cut me loose. He told investigators he picked up the woman and they started driving to Bentonville. Somewhere along the highway, he says he strangled her and left her body in a cornfield. I pulled her out of the car. She's too big for me to care. care. The FBI believes Little's confession is credible. Mr. Little has a pretty phenomenal memory. They say that's why they've been able to confirm more than 50 of Little's victims. Now they need help figuring out who this woman was. This is a woman who people have somewhat forgotten about. While Little will spend the rest of his time in a prison cell serving a life sentence. It is important to note here that the FBI has not found this woman's body. They tell Fox 16 that a challenge that they're going to keep running into with a lot of Little's victims is that their deaths weren't initially ruled a homicide. Many were thought to be overdoses. That was the case with the woman Little admitted to killing in Pine Bluff around the same time as this victim. The Little Rock Police Department confirming Officer Charles Starks has returned to work. Starks was fired following the February 2019 deadly shooting of Bradley Blackshire. The reinstatement follows the circuit court's reversal of the Civil Service Commission's decision to uphold Starks' firing. On Tuesday, the city of Little Rock faced being found in contempt of court if it didn't reinstate Starks. The judge also said Chief Keith Humphrey would have to turn in his gun and badge and the city would have to pay a $10,000 fine each day he remained off the clock. A standoff in Craighead County earlier this week resulting in a deputy being shot by a suspect. Deputies were responding to a disturbance that started in a Poinsett County home last Monday. Authorities say the suspect Eugene Collins left the home. He was later found on Craighead County Road 847. When deputies approached his white truck, he tried to leave but crashed. That's when deputies say Collins got out of the truck and shot at them. Sheriff Marty Boyd confirming one deputy went to the hospital with minor injuries. Law enforcement negotiated with Collins for nearly two hours before he ultimately surrendered. A new patrol unit now cruising the streets of White County. The sheriff's office there started a street crimes unit that consists of two deputies and one canine. Their focus, drugs and thefts. Each shift they patrol the streets making traffic stops. Earlier this week, Fox 16 joined them as they hit the streets looking for any kind of traffic violation. While we were there, 
Several people were pulled over for speeding, swerving, and even just a taillight being out. During these stops, deputies are on the lookout for anything to give them probable cause to search a vehicle. The purpose of this street crimes is this is what we do. We go out and we look for these, this stuff and not have to worry about getting called out or getting called off uh, to go and ask for a call. During the two hours we were with them, a total of five stops were made. In one case, Deputy Allen smelled marijuana coming from the car, giving him probable cause. He only found a small amount of pot, so it was just a citation and the person was let go. Allen says they find anything from marijuana to meth, even heroin. Caught on camera, a burglar invading homes in Hillcrest, Capitol View and Stipped Station neighborhoods. The crimes happening so often, people who live in these neighborhoods are now fighting back via the Internet. Our Haley Brooks shows us a new website that showcases the crimes and the criminal and hopes it will lead to an arrest. This is a different level when they're entering homes and, and cars. The streets in Hillcrest are pretty quiet during the day. But at 4 a.m., a different story is being told with a recent spike in home invasions. I wouldn't hesitate to shoot someone if they were in my home. Kevin Hammond has lived on this street for 23 years. While his home hasn't been burglarized, one home on this street has, and he says it's too close for comfort. Going into someone's house is, uh, is a new level of uh, kind of intimidation and in, in all of Little Rock, really. The website, hillcrestburglar.com, gives a timeline for home invasions and burglaries. The first one happened January 5th on Midland Street at 4 a.m. The next five happened 10 days later. One on Ridgeway Street at 4 a.m., another on the same street at 4.30, then Midland again five minutes after that. Three minutes later, he was at another home back on Ridgeway and ending on Booker Street seven minutes later. The last burglary listed happened two days later on Ridgeway, burglarizing a home for the second time. When the front headlines is intruder breaking into a home was shot and killed, um, you know, that's going to send a message that, hey, no one's going to put up with you trying to take something that's not yours. Little Rock police say they have been working closely with the neighbors who created the website. We want the public to be aware of this person's out there and we want them to uh, pass along any information that they may have of who this person is. Little Rock police say this investigation is ongoing, but they did find the car and identified a possible suspect. For more information on the burglar website, just go to fox16.com. Little Rock authorities identifying the victim in Wednesday's deadly shooting. Officers found a 2014 white Nissan Maxima and 21-year-old John Ward behind the Pick Pack liquor store on West 12th Street. Police say Word died at the scene. 25-year-old Cortez Kendrick told de detectives, excuse me, he shot Word after he tried to rob his brother. Investigators say the shooting happened at the O'Reilly Auto, Auto Parts store on Asher. Kendrick is facing a theft by receiving charge. Charges related to the homicide have not been filed as the investigation continues. Turning now to our crime tracker report, authorities shoot and kill a Pope County man who they say opened fire on officers. The incident happening earlier this week after deputies say the man pointed a gun at drivers along a state highway. Authorities identified the victim as 24 year old Anthony Langley Jr. from Russellville. Our Tyler Thomason explains how it all unfolded. Law enforcement vehicles remain huddled at the Atkins police station hours after a deadly shootout just blocks away. It was about 930 this morning. Uh, I was here at work. Lisa Brinkley and, uh, tells me she saw more than 20 patrol cars speed by Main Street. Police officers, uh, city, county, state. Uh, we even seen a safety officer from Arkansas Tech. Word eventually leaked out of a man shot dead by police. The Pope County Sheriff says moments before that, the man was seen pointing a gun at passing cars here along Highway 105. He shot at an officer who showed up to investigate. The gunman then ran into the woods and shot at other officers who surrounded him. Authorities returned fire, killing him. The news soon spread all over a town where passing trains and log trucks are usually the only things that turn heads. Being in this small town, when you hear about something like this happening, what goes through your mind? Oh, uh, just pure sadness. Um, I mean, like I said, I know his family. 
uh, on his mother and his father's side. I, I worked with his grandmother uh, years ago, and uh, uh, it, it's, it's heartbreaking. The nearby Atkins School District was briefly put on lockdown. No officers were hurt in that shootout. A man is now behind bars after authorities say he shot a store clerk in the head and injured another during an attempted robbery. Kobe Miller is in Washita County Jail arrested for trying to rob the Jordan Avenue Dollar General on Sunday. Last Sunday, he was taken into custody and charged with capital or attempted murder, theft of property and aggravated robbery. No update on the condition of the gunshot victim or other clerk who fought with Miller. In tonight's cold case watch, one of Arkansas's most wanted fugitives getting national attention. Jory Worthen was featured on In Pursuit with John Walsh on ID Discovery earlier this week. Worthen is wanted on two counts of murder. Camden police say on June 25th of last year, Worthen killed his girlfriend, Allison Cannon, and her four-year-old son, Marshall Ponder, inside their home. Since then, Worthen has been on the run. Last November, I sat down with the lead investigator, Randy Coyne, with the U.S. Marshals. Do you feel like you're at a dead end? I don't think we're at a dead end. Um, so, some cases just take longer to solve. You confident you'll get them? I am very confident of that. I am confident that we will find out where he is one way or the other. As for Worthen's whereabouts, Deputy Coyne telling me Worthen planned his escape long before anyone could find him or the bodies. A month after the crime, authorities did find Worthen's car 2,300 miles away in Seattle, Washington. But so far, still no sign of the wanted fugitive. Tonight's Mug of the Week goes to a man who seems to know how to pose for the cameras. Justin Paul Biggers went GQ for this photo shoot slash mug shot. He was booked into the Pulaski County Jail last Friday on a disorderly conduct charge. His bond set at 500 bucks. As we leave you, here's a look at Arkansas's most wanted. We want to remind you all of the suspects you've seen tonight are innocent until proven guilty in the court of law. Remember, if you have any information on any of these cases we talked about tonight, you're asked to call your local police department. Thanks for watching Arkansas Crime Watch. I'm Kevin Kelly. Be smart, be safe, and if you see something, be sure to say something. I'll see you tomorrow night on Fox 16 News at 9.